Hello and welcome to the channel, I'm Omanus and today I will do the top 10 controversial band member replacements in rock. Ozzy Osbourne and Ron and James Dio are the thumbnail indicating that uh, Dio replaced Ozzy, you know, of the original uh, 6 or 8 albums for that matter. Which I all like, I'm kind of iffy on the last two with Ozzy, but they're still pretty good and you know, 13, uh, you know. It's, it's kind of a showcase album of all oh, we're still alive, it's a bottom of the tongue, fuck's sake. We're, we're still alive, but we don't really have it anymore, but still give us money because we're, we're Black Savage, you know. That, that's kind of how I feel about 13. It, it's it's alright, you know. And I talked in Controversial Band and uh, I, get, I get a clip of Born Free. And pre I'm pretty sure if I click on that, yeah, this video might be inappropriate for some users. I'm actually really surprised that this video is uh, on YouTube right now. Like, Maya's Born Free, that's one of the most controversial things ever, and I'm actually really surprised that it is on YouTube right now. Like, I, I watched it on Vimeo because it was, you know, such a... Are they will call me, or the gingers. I mean, it's still on YouTube though, what the fuck? Like, they're literally, sh uh, like, killing gingers. Like, that's where Alex went, so I already made a joke. Like, what the fuck? Like, gingers are literally blowing up right here, like, yeah. Or they maybe censor those parts, I don't know. Like, I'm pretty sure there's like one kid uh, in a bit that literally get blown up. And you can see all the blood, yeah, right here, the blood uh, details. Like, it just blows up, yeah, oh my god. Ugh. A hand right there, boy. I mean, how is this? How is it on YouTube? What the fuck? The amount of people that still think this is about gingers and are completely missing the point is impressive. The what? If it's not about gingers, then what the fuck is it about then? I don't understand the context about the gingers because uh, one comment was saying, oh yeah, it's not about the gingers, but what, what is it about then? Like gingers are literally getting shot. What the fuck? I don't get that video, but sure about it. Sure. Like, and if you want to know why I uh, clicked on that video, like I saw it when I typed in controversial band and I got that video for some reason. Band isn't always easy. Welcome to watchmojo.com I actually just watched this video in a bit, but I haven't watched uh, the complete video I believe I just watched the first 5 minutes So, uh, Metallica, uh, Ozzy Osbourne of course uh, Axl Rose's band right now, Axl Rose Project um, Well, I know the number 1, but I'm not gonna spoil it yet I mean, for me, the number 1 is not really controversial I just think whenever that member got in, all the all the passion of that band went away and they just sold out. That's what I think. Are they gonna count in uh, Phil Collins for Peter Gabriel? Because Phil Collins was already in the band, but they swapped or you know Peter Gabriel left and Phil Collins went on, onto the vocals. I'm not sure if they're gonna do that, but they might do that. I don't know. Jim Morrison. I mean, everyone hates the fucking, uh, the Jim Morrison, uh, replacement because, uh, it's, uh, it's not legal, it's not real. But I mean, Jim Morrison isn't there anymore and there's like this lookalike look guy, uh, with 21st century doors. And I'm like, just let them tour, you know, let's just have their, their nostalgia tour because the guy looks really similar to Jim Morrison. So just let them have that, I suppose. Don't you know? Don't legal bullshit the doors because you know. Let 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 just let just have them. You know, let them have that moment because. Number ten. I would almost I would almost say that's Jim Morrison right there. You know, that 21st century guy. Yeah. I actually really like the good joke. Uh, they're gonna talk about this in a bit. Fuck sake, my speaker. Ian Pace of Deep Purple was in the band on, I believe, the Squeeze record that no one wants to mention because uh, it's a terrible album. And I mean, yeah, it's not Velvet Underground, but I mean, it is pretty cool though that Ian Pace is on, on a Velvet Underground record, but you know, it's the, it's the only one that people don't give a shit about. That's kind of, that's kind of a shame. Doing the things that 
Jackals will. As the Velvet Underground's co-founder, Lou Reed was the band's main singer song. Like Deep Purple are one of those bands that is kind of present in the public eye. Like, oh, they were on the Black Sabbath record, they were on a Velvet Underground record. But they were on the records that were, that were just, just like, they were on, on uh, Black Sabbath and Vel Velvet Underground just after those bands peak, peaks. So it's really shitty, you know? It's really shitty that it happened, but whatever. I heard her call my name. I think those guitars, which, you know, uh, without the ending, you know, without the fucking string section, of guitars, I think that looks really weird, but you know, it's still, you can still play the guitar, but you can't tune it. Those are really weird guitars, I think, but whatever. Maybe you can tune it behind the back or something. I don't fucking know. Maybe that is for people that don't want to see, you know, other people tuning your guitar or something. I don't know why those guitars exist. Can someone explain that to me? I fucking love Ian and Bass. And several session players Deep Purple in, uh, in general. But it was still on the underground name to, you know, spark bus and shit. Because who's gonna buy a Duke Yule record? No one. Which was basically that record. No one gives a shit. I mean... I like Vivian Campbell and Dio, that's really the only thing that I think, you know, makes them great in one way or the other. I mean, outside of that, but what does uh, Vivian Campbell have? Not really anything, really. Like, who fucking cares about Death Leopard? However, Holy guitarist Steve Clark was also plagued with drinking problems. Fucking glam metal pushy shit. Oh, fuck off. So, following his 1991 It's not even metal, I mean, come on. Uh. Watching their first US tour in four years, and their first with new guitars, Vivian Campbell, who's replaced... Like, you actually get a good guitar from a good band, and they're not ha and it's controversial. Like, yeah, only, only Def Leppard fans will say that. Like, fuck's sake, man. It caused fans to discount Campbell's talent. Yeah, because Def Leppard fans are fucking brain dead. And they continue to hold on to I mean, why would you listen to Def Leppard? Are you fucking dumb? Like, Def Leppard fans, if you're watching this video, why do you listen to Def Leppard? That's a genuine question. I really don't see the appeal in Def Leppard, but you know, if you want to explain that to me, then say it, because they just sound and look like a dated 80s band, which they are. Their peak was in the 80s, all their, you know, all their most acclaimed and most popular albums are in the 80s and after that decade ended they just fucking died because Nirvana and Pearl Jam just fucking destroyed them. I'm not a Nirvana fan, but one thing that I'm happy that Nirvana did is fucking kill all the shitty fucking glam bands, like fuck's sake man. I'm thankful, for, uh, I'm thankful for Nirvana for that, but outside of that I really don't give a shit about them. There you go. Uh, the Doors. Jim Morrison for, uh, you know, both solo Jim Morrison, like, who fucking cares? Hey, Ian Asbury for Jim Morrison, The Doors. Or, yeah, Ian Asbury, which is basically the lookalike Jim Morrison. Personally, I don't see a problem with that, because I love the shit out of the Jim Morrison record. Like, you know, The Self-Titled, and Strange Days, and Jim uh, Morrison Hotel, uh, LA Woman, and all classic albums, and, I mean, the Doors don't really have another like great album in them because you know they're they're a ballsy frontman, you know their handsome ass Jim Morrison guy passed away or you know he OD. I'm pretty sure on on, uh, on co cocaine. I think I don't know on some sort of drug because it's a rock star. I'm come on. No, you know, I'm not laughing because of a dad, but that, that's how every artist dies, or every rock star, I suppose. Uh, and I mean, I don't really mind Ian Esbert, because he looks like Jim Morrison, he sings the songs pretty good. Yeah, he has a really croony, kind of bluesy, uh, psychedelic kind of voice. But, so I don't really mind Ian Esbert replacing Jim Morrison, because he looks and sounds like Jim Morrison. So why, why decline that? 
because it's either that or it's Skrillex with the doors, which like, oh, yeah, no, hell no. Like, don't get me wrong, I kind of have a soft spot for Skrillex. I kind of think he's good, but Skrillex with a classic rock act, no. I mean, come on now. For ACDC, Brian Johnson was chosen to fill Bon Scott's shoes. No one cares. Like, only good, one good album with, uh, with Bon or, or jo uh, what was his name? Brian Johnson. That's probably what I'm gonna do. Like, I'm probably gonna make a, a great album by Bad Bands list, and I'm probably gonna include Back in Black, Brian Johnson era ACDC. That's really his only good album with the band, in my opinion. So there you go. Death, the Doors used surviving members on vocals, but eventually disbanded in 1973. Because it was just abysmal. You can't call this The Doors, though. Like, Fuck that material. Ray Manzarek and Robbie Krieger formed the doors of the 21st century with the cults in Asbury. I mean, what is wrong with this? It sounds great. Am I the only one that actually likes this? It also led to legal battles. I really, I really like this. Fuck off. Oh yeah, I believe that John Densmore wasn't uh, the guitar or what was he? Raymond Zarek was the keyboard player, uh, arguably the most significant player of the band. Uh, Bobby Krieger was the guitar, no, 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 the drummer. John Densmore was, I believe, the guitar of the band. Due to the use of the band's name. Was he the drummer? No, I'm pretty sure it was the guitars. Because I don't have a bass player. Uh, Blaze Bailey for Bruce Dickinson. Yeah, uh, the X Factor is kind of a low key hit, I would say. It is kind of good. Uh, there's like this one song on there that I really like, the sign of the cross or something. Oh well, no, no, it's a Black Sabbath tune, the sign of the Southern Cross. Uh, there was something with cross on the X Factor which I really like. I, I like that song, but I sounded that I don't really care for it. Don't you think I could save ya? Don't you think I could save ya? Don't you think I can save your life? Which wasn't welcomed by early fans and diehard purists. Purists are fucking retarded. I may have purists are. Over time, however, I mean, uh, what's, the, what's his name again? The original Iron Maiden singer. Or the, the one on the debut in the Killers. Oh, what was his name again? I'm gonna get a shitload of hate for this, but. I forgot his name, like I always mention that guy, but I can't think of it right now. But I think he's good, but he's kind of more of a punky singer. He is good, but Bruce Dixon defined the band, I'm going to. He is the art made of singer. Uh, yeah, this is pretty much like Jewish Priest and Maiden back to back. Uh, Tim Ripper Owens for Rob Halford, which is arguably the greatest singer in metal, so yeah, that's always gonna be a decline. Number six, Tim Ripper and I mean, Tim Ripper Owens was in the fucking cover band of Judas Priest before joining Judas Priest. So that's a big, like, that's pretty much his fucking live dream right there, and he made it through. And, and you know, I think Jugulator is a good album, but it is a disappointment compared to Painkiller. I mean, Rob Halford leaving after that, I mean, I would do the same because Painkiller is such a fucking amazing album. You can't follow that up because Rob Halford thought, oh yeah, this is pretty much the greatest thing I ever made, so why make another one, right? And he holds that promise for like 13 years, I'm pretty sure, or maybe even 15 years. Like when, when this Angel of Retribution came out, 2005, so for one and a half decade or 14 years? Like, for a shitload of time, you didn't make a new record up until Painkiller, so up until Angel Retribution. So that only shows how immortal Painkiller is. Like, I've heard uh, the glo this glorious burden from I Served recently. I wasn't really a huge fan of that because it's kind of like a, a loose concept album with covers on it. 
I really don't care about Tim Ripper Owens albums like Juggalator is you know that's pretty much his best work I think. De uh, Demolition is a terrible album, you know, really underwhelming. And that's pretty much uh, or Judas Priestess Virtual Eleven in their discography, their real stinker. It's just really like a fuck all album, honestly. Um, yeah, so I think that Tim Ripper owes. I haven't heard a good album from him. I don't really like the Iced Earth era with him, you know. I prefer the. I forgot his name, but it's like I love uh, those early Iced Earth albums, even the covers album, I really like. Because you still have the original uh, singer on it. I just think whenever a, a Ripper Owens, uh, you know, replaces an original singer, he ruins the band for me. He's not per se a bad singer, but I, I prefer the original singers of Judas Priest and I Surd respectively. So. I forget, Halford, the replacement stirred up much public outcry mixed to poor reviews. When I saw it, I thought, wow, that's me. This is a, a true Rob Halford clone. Yeah. After years of Pretty much. A reunion, it finally came to fruition in 2003. How oh, earlier? I mean, those recent Rob Halford albums are fucking awesome. Redeemer of Souls are fucking firepower. Hell yeah. Uh, Journey. Separate ways, something. Uh, Arnold Pinedia for Steve Perry. This is kind of the same thing as with The Doors. I actually really like Arnold Pin uh, Pineda. He actually really sounds, he looks a bit different than Steve Perry because that's because he's from a Philippine Asian background and people are kind of racist towards that. Oh, you know, he's not, he's not an American Journey member. Like, fuck off, you racist blokes. He's still pretty good. First singer, but Steve Perry is still linked to the band's most and then that's why people really like Steve Bear because he made Journey what it is today. The four core pop band that they are. Like, that everyone want, well, did rip off since, so there you go. Dude, four chord structure. Actions of Awesome. I actually really like uh, uh, Arnold Pineda. He really sounds uh, similar to Steve Perry. Just listen to his voice. Yeah, I mean, even what Mojo says, even you know his success and his vocals overall are really good. So shut the fuck up, uh, Steve Perry fanboys. Did I say it was Steve Perry? Yeah, there you go. I mean, fuck off you Steve Barry nostalgia purist fag boys out there, like, uh, Aldani, he is a good singer, he is really good, he, he really sounds similar to, to Steve Barry, it's the best thing you're gonna get, so fucking deal with it. I'm not, I'm not even that big of a fucking Journey fan, but I mean, he sounds really good, so fuck off. It's kind of like the Jim, Jim Morrison thing, he kind of looks different, which makes people racist probably, but I, I think he sounds good. Multiple um, Yeah, Cliff Burton, of course, passed away, Jason Newstead uh, re replacing him. Uh, fucking James Hetfield and Lars Ulrich kind of being, you know, having a feud with Jason Newstead because they were kind of on and off with each other, and Jason Newstead kind of leaving eventually because he felt left out if, I, if he felt like the dark horse the uh, the black sheep of the of the horde so he kind of left and then robert trujulio who i don't really care for uh david stain obviously getting kicked out of the band just before the kill em all debut and you know metallica taking all credit for it although mustaine wrote them all so fuck metallica for that but i still really like them so there you go but fuck, or you know, not pretty fuck Metallica because I'll, I'll probably do the same thing. I think a anyone would do the same thing with you know Mustaine stand on there. Uh, you know, you would uh, you would take his work, but at least she was crediting, which they didn't do, which I think is kind of a low blow, honestly. Did they credit Dave Mustaine on the Kill 'Em All record? They did credit him for the Call of Cthulhu on uh, Ride the Line. They did co uh, co credit him for that, but did they credit him for fucking Kill 'Em All? 
I do like that uh, remark of Damon Stay when he said, uh, yeah, just before I left the band, I fucked Kirk Hammond's uh, girlfriend or something. <laughs> the most original, heaviest, I love that comment. thing I've ever seen in my life. Which brought on the Kirk Hammond is kind of like a pussy crybaby, in my opinion. You know, the wah wah pedals are literally a crybaby. Whereas Damon Stay is kind of a ballsy front man. I love that. I still love Kirk Hammond, don't get me wrong, but I mean, you got all of those comments. I don't know why. They're kind of real, they're kind of funny, they're kind of, you know, jokingly. Next, Flotsam Jetsons Jason Newstead was hired to replace the late Cliff Burton on base. Mm -hmm. Stain wrote them all. I mean, is Damon Stain credited? I mean, they do say it in the article here. Damon Stain Pictures in 2005 was an early member of Metallica uh, and co wrote several songs on Kill 'em All. His erratic and violent behavior led to his uh, expulsion from the band prior to recording the album. But Mustaine wrote them all indeed, so there you go. Number three, Ronnie James Dio for Ozzy Osbourne, Black Sabbath. I mean, yeah, it is kind of controversial, but purists, of course, prefer Ozzy era. I'm, all, I will be honest, I do prefer the Ozzy era too, but I think that you can't, you can't discredit the Dio era. I mean. He only made three, three records with uh, with fucking Black Sabbath, but those were amazing records. Heaven and Hell was one of my all-time favorites. Mob Rules is a really good one, although some people say it's overrated. I don't really see it, but it's a great record too. And uh, The Humanizer is a great record, really underrated. So really check out those albums. I think those Dio records are great. I'm not a huge fan of um, the... Uh, the Martin era, uh, I'm not sure how he's called again, but something with Martin. I'm not a huge fan of those albums and you know, the, the fucking, the Deep Purple album, Born Again, you know, with the album cover. <laughs> Abysmal, but you know, eh, it's kind of mixed for me. Mixed back. Oh yeah, yeah, Mustaine is credited for some songs. Mustaine is only credited for a third of the record though. For uh, the Four Horsemen, uh, Jump in the Fire, and Metal Militia. Which, they do sound like the most Megadeth-esque songs, so there you go. Uh, this is a funny ass comment right here. Um, uh, everybody except for Extra Rose for somebody else, Guns N' Roses. I, I believe that's pretty much it. I fucking love this one. Number two, everybody but Axel Rose for, for somebody, somebody else, else, Guns N' Roses. <laughs> I mean, Axel Rose, atrocious singer. It's a really funny. Uh, it's just really funny. It's hilarious. Number two, everybody but Axel Rose for somebody else. Guns and Roses. I mean, even Axel left of this or Axel Alex. Fuck Axel. I do really like that chick too. That really looks like Axel Rose. Um, she has kind of like a Star Wars name. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, but just look up Extra Rose sister or a daughter or something and you will probably find her. I think she's a pretty good channel. She just discovered Elton John, okay. However, artistic differences and Rose's inability to get along with pretty much everyone. Yep. Granted the negative stuff. I mean, Slash is so uh, held back with his comments on Extra Rose. Like, even if you, like there's a Loudwire video that is about one minute long and the positive things about Axl Rose videos like not even a minute long, so I mean, let's just say it all, really. What's the 
the band gets its act together, at least by his lights, there will be no more Guns N' Roses tours, websites, videos, merchandise, or even a fan club. Since Axel had the rights to the band's name... I mean, only Axel would uh, fucking design shoes with the, with, with the fucking word Axel. And I mean, only he would do that, fucking douchebag. But the fact that he's the only remaining That atrocious November Rain live performance. Like whenever the, the fucking feud between Slash and Axel was so fucking huge, whenever he would show these videos, like, oh, these are my favorite videos on the web uh, from Slash now, and he just showed Axel Rose film compilations. Like, those guys hated each other. But then Slash was like, oh, you know, I want some more money, so let's make it up again and, you know, get some money. Like, it's so obvious that Guns N' Roses is like a past prime band, and this fucking suck after Appetite. And they're only reuniting together, you know, Slash and Duff because, oh, you know, we want money. They don't have Steven Adler because Steven Adler wants to join, but he's too fucking, you know, he, he can't speak coherently after his fucking OD. That they don't want him anymore. And uh, Izzy Stradlin doesn't want to, uh, you know, he doesn't want anything to do with the band, uh, which is appropriate. <laughs> Smart guy, extra Rose is a fucking, you know, he has his moments, but he's a fucking dumbass douchebag. Axel DC, uh, Brian Johnson with Bond called AC DC. I mean, it was like the debut Brian Johnson, uh, Back in Black, that's the best AC DC album, but outside of that, yeah, Bond called is way better. I don't know, I'm going to be back. Oh, fuck's sake, Phil and Selma for Terry Clay. Like, fuck those early Pantera albums. Let's go to Mouth for War. How did you know that, ominous? I've already watched it. Oh, yeah, do, do you actually see this? I got a new Pantera shirt, hell yeah. Check out Hell Yeah, too. That wasn't even intentional, but there you go. John Karabi for Finn's new Motley Crue, fucking cares. Motley Crue is atrocious. Uh, oh yeah, I, I want to say, oh, is this fucking Alice Cooper, but it's still Motley Crue. I want to say it's, uh, it sucks either way, but I know a lot of people love Alice Cooper, so there you go. Oh, uh, David Gilmer for Sid Barrett. Not really, only like retarded Sid Barrett fanboys would say Oh, so the band was so much better with Sid Barrett Like fuck all, oh, David Gilmour's way better Like the commercial and the creative peak was with David Gilmour And you know, when Waters left, Pink Floyd was at a, was a, was at a creative low Because David Gilmour can't write intelligent shit to save his fucking life. He can co-wrote really well, but he needs Roger Waters for backup. I mean, come on now. John Bush for Joey Belladonna, Anthrax. I mean, I love Joey Belladonna uh, albums. Yeah, pretty much every Joey Belladonna album is pretty good. Like the spreading among, uh, well, you know, uh, State of Euphoria yeah, is kind of mad, but still pretty good, you know, compared to the later stuff. Persis Persistence of Time is a really low-key classic, I think, and uh, the last two are pretty good. Worship Music and uh, For All Kings are all really good records in my opinion, so definitely check those out. So every Joey Belladonna album is pretty good. I only, it's kind of like the same with ACDC, I only like the debut with John Bush, which is uh, The Sound of White Noise, which is arguably the most underrated uh, album in the Anthrax discography. Love the shit out of that album. I hate the rest of John Bush. I, I, I think that's only. I love the shit out of only. James Hetfield, of course. Like, if you go to the only video on Anthrax, then uh, everyone will say, oh, uh, James Hetfield thinks this is a perfect song. And yeah, it is pretty much a perfect song. So there you go. Fucking amazing song, I love Only. 
Uh, yeah, I love the song too, Panama by Van Halen. <coughs> um, Van Hagar versus uh, fucking David Lee Roth. I mean, fuck off. Number one, Sammy Hagar for David Lee Roth. I mean, David Lee Roth is Van Halen. Fuck over your Sammy Hagar bullshit. The only good thing that he ever contributed to fucking Van Halen is, uh, you know, that fucking 86 album or something. I like that album, but outside of that, Sammy Hagar is fucking awful. I mean, come on. Uh, this is Van Halen right here. Or, you know, the debut. Eruption. No, a change of style was accompanied by a change of frontman with Sammy Hagar. Atrocious. Pound cake. Like it's basically, uh, it's it's a low-key soft porn fucking music video. That's all that it is really. And, and Wolf for Teacher did it better anyway, so fuck off. Their problems continue. Although the tits and the hair in Pound Cake is really good, but the music is fucking atrocious. Oh my god. Oh man. Some of the worst music ever, that Van Halen 3 album. Like, I hate Sammy Hagar, but oh my fucking god, Gary Sharon and Van Halen. I do, li I do like this one too. The Different Kind of Truth album? I'm pretty sure it's called like that. Be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Yeah, it's pretty good, I think. Uh, yeah, so that's the list, and uh, yeah, I have like one more minute to uh, to check the comments, I suppose. <clears throat> All metal has must thank God that David was kicked out of Metallica because we wouldn't have Megadeth, and Megadeth is better than Metallica, so gonna like you for that. Phil and Selma saved Pantera, pretty much. Everybody but extra road for somebody else. Oh, that's rich. <laughs> Amazing, I love that. Dio and Ozzy had so different styles of singing. Dio was definitely the better singer, but personally, I love Ozzy's style more. Black Sabbath was darker during Ozzy's, and it was never. It was heavier during Dio's. Both amazing though. Uh, yeah, I think that Ozzy was perfect for the Sabbath sound, and Dio is the better singer in general. So that is still a, a debate that holds up. But I don't have any time anymore. Debate for that in the comments. I will see you in the next video. Peace.